The PJ Flex Show is brought to you by Cub Foods and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. It's the PJ Flex Show with Hobie RT, Ron Johnson, and Justin Gard. Let's row the boat. Well, it's a busy Wednesday to get into here on the PJ Flex Show as we take a look at this Gophers program with some big news both on and off of the field, along with KFA and Justin Gard and head coach PJ Fleck. I'm Hobie Arteague. And coach, as always, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having us. Well, uh, you have to be pretty excited right now. Uh, right before our taping of this show, news came down that you just signed a seven-year contract that keeps you here at the University of Minnesota through the 2028 season. Can you take us through that and just how excited you are to be part of this program for even many years moving forward? Yeah, we're obviously very excited. You know, anytime a head coach gets a contract, and uh, it's, it's a direct byproduct of the players and, and the staff and uh, you know, we talked when we first got here about cultural sustainability and what that means at the University of Minnesota. And it wasn't a very hard decision. I mean, uh, I've said I wanted to be here from the start and hopefully be here as as long as Minnesota wants, you know, Heather and I here and our staff and, and the way we run our program. Uh, but like I said, this is this is a team extension and team contract. and We're just very excited to be able to lead, go for football into the future. Going back a couple of years to your last contract extension, PJ, this first week of November seems like a good time to kind of take care of this business. What is it about maybe this time of year before the coaching carousel opens and speculation and everything pops in? What is it kind of about this time of year? Is that just a coincidence? Um, no, there is no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> um, we always talk to our players about external distractions, and I think we always hold our players to a high standard of eliminating external distractions. Uh, and I don't think uh, being a coach is any different. And, you know, when you know where you want to be, I think it makes it easier. You can always drag things out and, um, you know, and, and play that game. And, and But for me, like, that's not what Heather and I are about. We're about wanting to be here. Uh, we've made that very simple. And uh, we said that from the start. Not only do we want to be here, we want our staff here. We want to continue to recruit the best student athletes we possibly can to bring them to the University of Minnesota uh, and keep doing all the things we're doing on the field and off the field, academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually. And, and, and I've told our players today, we actually signed the contract in front of them. And I told them this is, this is about when, you know, you get married and you bring your kids back here and you're around the same culture and same program and, and that row the boat type culture. So uh, th this was more than just us. This is, this is for everybody. Uh, and we're just so excited to be in, in Minnesota and the Twin City area for a long time. Well, Coach, your team continues to play for each other. You mentioned how a contract is a byproduct of their success, and they're having plenty of it. Right now ranked 20th in the latest college football playoff rankings, the top team in the division in the Big Ten on this four-game winning streak. Granted, there is still work to be done. You take it one week at a time, but just up to this point of the season, how proud are you of this group as they just continue to build and build in Big Ten play? Well, we showed them the Atlanta Braves uh, th this morning uh, winning, the, or winning the World Series, and we talked to them about, you know, the Braves talked about they had tons of injuries. They were kind of written, written off in August. And, you know, that was – and all of a sudden they turned around and, and play their best, you know, baseball towards the, the end of the year. And you got to play your best football in November, period. We've got a lot of guys on our football team have gone through November and when November has mattered and we've done some really good things and we've also not done some good things. But those rankings and all that stuff, that's still external stuff. I mean, the coaches poll, the AP poll, that didn't have us ranked. And last night we get ranked and – we had a meeting about that this morning, but our players are very smart and, and they understand that um, the external factors don't matter. And that was what today was about as well. You know, let's eliminate all the external talk about where we're headed or what we're doing or what speculations there. And we're all in this whole thing together and the expectations, the expectation from a player and a coach and a coach to a player. Uh, we've got a one game championship season against Illinois coming up and that's what we're focused on. Another great day on the ground against Northwestern, PJ, and, and you're kind of down to the air. I guess Derek <laughs> LeCaptain, who we just uh, saw there, could be part of the air as well. But Kai Thomas and you know, Bucky I don't, I, don't, I don't know, JG, what's after the air, though. Well, I was told, <laughs> somebody told me a prayer. You go from the pair <laughs> to the spare to the air That's to the prayer. So if you want to steal that, you can take, I don't know if Derek LeCaptain's the prayer or if um, somebody else is the prayer, but I think that's where you might be here. But luckily the air is still intact at the moment. You've got the air with the two freshman running backs. What have you seen from them here the last couple of weeks? I know people say I say a lot of slogans. That's the best one. You like that <laughs> that's one? That's the best one I've You heard. can take it. Uh, I haven't heard that one before, JD. So you win, man. Um, Listen, we're going to continue to do what's needed to, to help our football team win. And I'm just so proud of our team and the fact of everybody stepping in, stepping up, changing positions for, for, the, for the benefit of the team. Uh, that's really hard to do. 
uh, especially when a guy has been committed to that one position for three years or two years, and all of a sudden they're moved in a, in, in a different role where they've got to learn it. they got to learn it quick. But this team, this is why they're so fun to coach. They love challenges. They love to come together. And um, this has been a very challenging season, but that's what this team's all about is embracing those challenges and taking it one day at a time. Well, your freshman running backs, they've been absolutely monstrous. You've called on them more and more and more, and they've really taken this opportunity and run with it. But last, a couple of weeks ago, including last week, you were talking about the impact Bryce Williams has just made on this team, including this running back room as well. How big is his loss moving forward for this offense as a whole? Well, every player that gets hurt is a huge loss. You know, they all, we, we all have value. And whether that's a scout team player, whether it's a starting tailback, or whether it's our third string tailback, uh, we all have value. And, you know, it's very difficult when you lose teammates and, and you lose a player like Bryce Williams. And there's nothing he could have done about it. I mean, you can see the player that falls right there on his, on his fibula and, and uh, his ankle. And there's really nothing you can do. Uh, you know, th this is, these are, these are game in game type injuries where guys are just playing their hearts out. And, uh, those are going to happen in football, but he's doing great. Uh, he's recovering after surgery, doing really well, and he'll be back at it very shortly. It's uh, it's not a long recovery, so uh, not to say he, you know he's still out for the season, but he'll be back right after that and healthy and ready to roll. You've known Tanner Morgan a long time. You've watched him a long time. Have you ever seen him run as fast <laughs> as he ran on Saturday for his touchdown? Speaking of prayer, yeah, yeah I thought he might. I've, I've never I've never seen him run that fast, but pretty good juice there. Pretty good acceleration on the touchdown. What did you see? I think he was so surprised when he pulled it that the, <laughs> that the, that the linebacker didn't, didn't come after him. I mean, he had such a great fate that there was hesitation by the linebacker coming off the edge. And I think the linebacker said, there's no way Tanner kept yeah. that ball. Uh, and he actually did pull it. But uh, you know what? He did show some speed when he accelerated into the end zone. And, but that he's just he, he, that's what we talk about. He's a coach on the field. He's a coordinator on the field. He knows when it's right to pull it, when it's not. Um, and that's the byproduct of that and he's just he's getting better and better with each week and Mike Sanford's doing a great job with him coach along some of those same lines you're a run first offense right now because it's just working so well but when you have experienced guys go down this season with injury as you have had pretty much all season long how beneficial is it to have a quarterback like Tanner Morgan who has seen a lot of football even if he isn't throwing the ball a ton just to have his presence on the field to kind of be a calming soothing presence in that huddle yeah, as we talked before, we want to be balanced no matter what. We want to be able to, if we're going to have to throw it 50 times, we want to throw it 50 times to win the game, then we have to be able to do that. If we got to run it 50 times to win the game, we want to be able to do that. Uh, and we believe that Tanner can do all of that. You know, he, can, he can run the offense, manage the offense when running the ball, and then manage the offense if he gets the opportunities to throw the ball. And there's going to be plenty of opportunities, just like there's been throughout the year, where we needed our wideouts to step in, step up, make huge plays for us. And moving forward, that would be no different. Michael Brown Stevens, one of those wideouts, we're looking at him here in the Purdue game. Since that Purdue game, he's really established himself as one of your primary weapons. With Crab getting so much attention, how big has it been for a guy like Michael to step up? And what have you seen from his development this season? Well, Michael's matured so much. You know, I mean, maybe one of the most uh, improved people and players on our football team, uh, on the field, off the field, really has grown up an awful lot. Uh, and he's a big play threat. He can really run. He's not the biggest guy, but he can really run and make plays. Uh, and he cares about his teammates. Uh, he, he's had to do a lot to get to this point, and he's earned everything that he's getting. And that's what I love about this team. And Michael Brown Stevens is a great example of that. Everything that they're getting, they've earned every bit of it, and nothing's been handed to them. And Michael Brown Stevens is, is no different than that. But he's, he's really developed as a complete wide receiver. Matt Simons, you know, uh, known for his wide receiver development and done a great job of molding Michael. You know, when, you know, uh, Daylon was out and Chris Altman Bell was out and Daniel was out, I mean, uh, but this core is starting to come together. Uh, this core, as we talked at the beginning of the year, this is one of the fastest receiving cores we've had. And we've just kind of been in and out, in and out, in and out, and never really come together as a unit yet. And hopefully in November we can do that. Well, Daniel Jackson had a nice catch on that first drive. Dalen Wright did as well. But I know one thing you'd like to have solved before the end of the season is scoring before halftime. Two weeks ago was a blocked field goal. Last week, the ball is intercepted in the end zone while being aggressive and going for six. Just how important is it to get at that aspect of the game figured out with four games of the season still to go, including games against Wisconsin and against Iowa? Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, when it comes down, it just comes down to execution, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's the beginning of the half, end of the half, end of the game um, it, it really is no different uh, but the, they're up against the clock and that's the only thing and we put ourselves in position two weeks in a row to score we just haven't scored so the end result's not what we want but we put our players in the best position to go be successful now 
The interception can't happen. The block field goal can't happen. Uh, and those are just two instances that uh, we weren't able to get it done. Now, we've got to get better uh, at, at being more efficient, whether it's at the end of the half, end of the game, beginning of the game. As we keep going forward, the standard's a standard. It doesn't change when you get to the end of the half. So uh, we just got to be more effective, more efficient, and, and be able to execute the plays that are called. And uh, we just haven't been able to do that the last two weeks uh, in that particular situation. In the last month or so, we've talked about your running game, being able to run the ball on everybody, and we've talked about your defense just continuing to improve and continuing to play. I don't even know how to address the defense, PJ, because it seems kind of boring. It's like they're playing really well. <laughs> what have you liked from, from your defense? It seems like it's the same question every week. Yeah, I think everybody likes to talk about the offense. Uh, I think the defense sometimes is like a long snapper. You really never know uh, what's kind of going on over there. Uh, unless, you know, uh, the long snapper snaps the ball over somebody's head. Uh, but our defense is playing absolutely lights out, and they're playing incredibly hard. They're playing for each other. They're swarming to the football, a lot of extra effort. Uh, and, and they're really, as we said before, they're not doing anything different than they did at the beginning of the year. There's, they're playing complementary football with each other. Uh, they're playing together football, and it, it's a lot of fun to see. And they're having fun. I think sometimes we look at football as this business, and I know it is, and winning's important, but – these are still young men. They got to have fun, and they're definitely having fun uh, playing the game. And Joe Rossi and our staffs doing a great job on you know on on the other side and uh, just really you know molding them and giving them the best opportunity to, to succeed. You said something funny last week about giving up a late touchdown. That Joe Rossi hates it because it's kind of a directive of we're just going to play the clock, keep them in front, let them move the ball. And Rossi hates it. So I assume he hated it against Northwestern as well on Saturday, right? When they get the touchdown late and he wants, you know, clean numbers all across the board. What are those conversations like with him? Well, I think what would be a great fundraiser for a charity is to be able to raffle off the last two minutes of a game like that where you get to get on the headset and listen. Uh, I bet you could raise a lot of money. I would do it. I would uh, coach, coach Rossi, you know, he hates that part. But again, you're doing what you can to, to win the football game. And the best thing for the team, and he under, and he knows this. He's not arguing with us uh, and, and me about it. It's just he hates to see points go on the board, which I absolutely hate as well. So we share that in common. But you got to be able to make sure that you're doing the proper things, playing the proper coverages, so they don't get one play, one touchdown, and nine seconds off the clock. And the next thing you know, um, the two possession game became a little more obtainable. So sometimes you, you don't want the touchdowns to be scored, but if they have to be scored. They've got to go a long ways with a lot of time to be able to make that happen. All right, still much more to come here on the PJ Flex Show as we take a look at what's ahead for the Gophers. All eyes, they are on the Illini this weekend as Illinois comes to the bank with a new but familiar head coach to Gopher fans. We take a look at Brent Bielema's team when we return here on the PJ Flex Show. Let's row the boat. You're watching the P.J. Flex Show. Back on the P.J. Flex Show with the Gophers head coach, Ron Johnson, Justin Gard. I'm Hobie Arteague. And Coach Illinois coming up, a familiar opponent, a division opponent, but under new leadership with Brett Bielema taking over in Champaign. Fans here know him from his time in Wisconsin, was also the head coach in Arkansas. But just from your vantage point, how similar does Illinois look compared to some of his previous teams? Yeah, Coach Bielema loves to do what he does, and that's run the football, play really sound defense. Uh, and play really physical style of football. I mean, he's, he's a fantastic football coach. Uh, he's done a lot in this conference, uh, especially with Wisconsin and then moving on to Arkansas and then his time in the NFL. And now he's doing it with the Illini. So, um, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. They run the ball very efficiently. They've got uh, two really good running backs. Uh, they're doing a really good job for them. They have offensive linemen where they put seven, eight on the field, kind of like us, call it the barge. And, <laughs> and uh, he did that at Wisconsin as well. Uh, but they're very, very deep at that position and the offensive line, which is I'm sure that's what he wants. Um, but a very good football coach, very good football team, a team that went out there and beat Penn State at Penn State a few weeks ago. So uh, we've got to play our best football and we know that. Yeah, coach, and as a former player, I'm super excited about the stretch of games you have coming up. A lot of trophies, but we know that you never overlook a team. So looking at Illinois just beating Penn State, what can you pull from this team and how do you look at this opponent as far as not being upset as well? Oh, we embrace our past to create our future. I mean, look at our year this year. I mean, we've had some highs. We've had some lows. We played really good football and at times not so good football, uh, respectively. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we've, we've got to take it one day at a time, one championship game at a time, and that's what we're doing. This is, a, this is it. This is the only thing in our season that matters right now. That's it. It's a one-game championship season against the Fighting Illini here at Huntington Bank Stadium at 11 a.m. And 
I hope everybody comes out and supports us and we can sell out the bank and, and uh, hopefully go out there and play our best football. It seems like every week we're asking you about a quarterback that's been in the Big Ten for like half a decade, including your own, <laughs> Tanner Morgan. And yeah, they're, they're saying the same thing about us. <laughs> exactly, but Brandon Peters is that guy this week. I feel like every year I look at the line, okay, Brandon Peters, he's at least going to be one of their quarterbacks. So only seen him for half a game going back a couple of years ago where he was injured, but how much more comfortable does he look this year, and what have you kind of seen from him? Well, he's a fantastic passer. Uh, he's got great touch on his football. He can throw every type of throw, uh, short, intermediate, long. Uh, does a great job of placing the football. He's very competitive. We've seen him for a lot of years, but th this guy can sling the football, and he's got really good receivers on the outside to throw the ball to. And uh, number one's been a big explosive player down the field for him. Uh, their tight ends have played a lot of football, and as you can see, so they're distributing the ball to a lot of playmakers right now and playing really good football. Well, Illinois' defense has played some pretty good offenses. They've kind of been up and down at times this season. But in their last six games, only one team has scored more than 20 points on them. What is their defense just doing so well to, that, that's kind of keeping opponents at bay whenever it comes to putting numbers on the scoreboard? Well, they're putting a lot of people in the box, and they're playing a lot of man coverage behind it. Anytime you do that, if you're not able to throw the football, it's going to be a longer day. Uh, they've got really good tackling safeties and linebackers. and Their D-line is very long and physical. They get off blocks really well, uh, but I think they tackle really well. And, and they're getting those safeties down into the box and using them as linebackers, too, and, and creating havoc at the quarterback position and getting to the quarterback and, and, and getting shots and hits on them. Coach, yeah, when you look at this team, though, it, the way you've run the ball the past few weeks, how hard is it for you to, you know, not get too, like, overzealous and tell the team, hey, all we have to do is run the ball down our throat so we can win this game, and basically just stick to the game plan with the explosive plays and still just be who you are? Yeah, we go into the game plan thinking that we really want to be able to be completely balanced, and whatever the game presents as we keep going forward, we're going to do. And I think that's, you know, when we talk about the word balance, we talked about it on the show before, is it doesn't mean that you're going to rush it 50 times and, and throw it for 50 times. It just means if you have to do one or the other more, can you do that to win a football game? And I think when you get into November, the more balanced you are, the better you're going to be. Uh, but again, just like them, I mean, you're going to hang your hat on running the football, but they know that and they're going to scheme against that. And we had to do a really good job this week of, of being able to scheme so we can. Uh, but again, that's why you go out there and play for three hours to figure it all out. All right, still much more to come here on Co with Coach Fleck, including the emergence of the emergency running back who had a great day. Oh, Captain LeCaptain. Derek LeCaptain had a moment to remember in Evanston. We discuss that next here on the P.J. Fleck Show. Welcome back to the P.J. Fleck Show. Let's row the boat. Well, Coach, it's on to Illinois, but a great moment from last Saturday coming at the end of the game against Northwestern with your emergency running back, Derek LeCaptain, three carries for 34 yards and a touchdown in the fourth quarter. You gave Derek a nice moment earlier in the season, putting him on scholarship, but what did it mean to you to see him get in a game and not even on the position or at the position that he's used to playing, just completely on the other side of the ball and allowing him to kind of put the game on ice for your offense? Yeah, I'd like to say it was one of those like heartfelt moments that really kind of touch you kind of like a scholarship video, but this is real, the real deal. Like we needed him to play and we're going to need him to play real football moving forward at the tailback position. He ran for like 500,000 yards in high school in Wisconsin. So he, he's used to all this stuff and he's pretty natural at it. Uh, but we were all just so excited for him because that's what this team's about. It's about for each other. It's about selflessness and it, it's about doing what's, the, the team asks of you and we talked in training camp is you know there's a difference between what you want to do and what the team needs you to do and Derek the captain has always been one of those guys that he does what the team needs him to do and he has no problem doing that and this isn't a charity this again this isn't just for fun uh this is real football and <laughs> he's done a great job in embracing that and again Kenny Burns deserves a lot of credit our running back coach at getting him caught up to speed pretty quickly one of the cool things you do every game is you wear a pin for a different charitable organization and kind of spotlight them throughout the week and throughout the day. This week you're going with Loaves and Fishes where your players have spent a lot of time over the years. Tell us a little bit about Loaves and Fishes and why it's important to highlight organizations like this. Well, I think it's always important as we talk about the spiritual part of our program of serving and giving and, and having a program of serving and giving is to, is to reach out to, and be a part and be connected to a lot of local charities. Uh, and especially with the holidays right around the corner, Lowe's and Fish is very, is very involved. 
uh, in our, our food drive and our turkey drive here coming up uh, in November uh, for Thanksgiving. And, you know, this is all about teaching our players that it's bigger than wins and losses. You have a platform, you have a voice, and you have a chance to influence a lot of people's lives, even as a student athlete. And then hopefully build those habits and instincts to be able to do that in the future as well. So uh, each week we switched it up. There's a lot of organizations and a lot of charities that we support and, and want to bring uh, notoriety to. Uh, Team Braxton, the one foundation right there that everybody sees and uh, everybody knows hopefully Braxton Battaglia, uh, who gave our pregame speech right there uh, before the Auburn game and did a great job. I mean, she gave the, she gave the pregame talk and we went out there and beat Auburn. So <laughs> she deserves all the credit and, and uh, cancer survivor. And so we just want to be, be able to bring a lot of awareness uh, to certain organizations and, and just bring that into our players' lives uh, about serving and giving. Coach, with about 40 seconds left, uh, this past weekend, tough for Henry Ruggs the third, uh, very serious situation. How do you use that as a coach to continue to grow your players to make sure they don't make those mistakes off the field? Yeah, I, I think it just goes back. It's very unfortunate, especially with the loss of life and, and just tragic and horrific to even think about. Uh, we talk to our players all the time about um, uh, you have the choice of the decision. Uh, sometimes you don't have the choice of the consequence. And you got to find a way to be able to, to make really good decisions. And uh, we have a lot of rules inside our program. Maybe sometimes they don't understand those rules until something like this can bring awareness to it. And, and um, hopefully they are able, able to learn the easy way by learning from someone else's mistakes instead of the hard way from their mistakes. But uh, just horrific and tragic and, and uh, not enough prayers uh, to go around for uh, everybody involved. Well, Coach, appreciate your time as always. We'll see you this weekend on the Gopher pregame show right here on Fox 9 at 9 a.m. But, Coach, best of luck taking on the Illini. Thanks, everybody.